I have a very long history with Valheim. The first time I ever played it, I played it on a server with my brother, which was honestly very fun. Valheim is a game that came out in 2021, developed by Iron Gate and published by Coffee Stain, which is the same company that released Deep Rock, which I have no complaints about. I absolutely love that game. I'll have to talk about that next. I used to play that game all the time. Uh, editing me, don't forget to put a picture of my hours on that game so people know I'm actually a fan. So when I talk about it and I make criticisms, they know I'm not just talking out of my I am a massive fan of a lot of the stuff they make, especially Ghost Simulator. Uh, although I don't own it, I have played it on another person's computer, and it was pretty fun. I just did not think it was worth owning on my own computer. It wasn't worth it at all, I'm sorry. Instead of Goat Simulator, I bought Into the Gungeon, which was a way better spend of my money, I think. I just actually have to put time into this game and play it, which I haven't done because I've been busy with stuff. I actually have a few things I do in my everyday life, which is surprising even to myself. And you know what you should do, and it would be equal equally as surprising, hitting that subscribe button. It's right down there and completely free. That way you can get notified every time I make a video, which will be way more frequently because I was recently unemployed. Or made unemployed, I guess I should say. I, uh, I quit my job. <laughs> <laughs> Not only is it completely free, but you can always unsubscribe later. But if you do subscribe, you'll get notified for every single one of these videos that I make. And I personally think that's a really good deal. But this video isn't talking about the other stuff they made. This video is talking about Valheim. By far one of the best games they have ever released. And the only one that they've made that I play consistently. Valheim is an open world survival game. And if you've ever played one, you know the gist. Going around the world, finding resources, building a house, and doing your best to survive and beat the bosses until the end of the game. But Valheim does something very different, and where you don't get hungry and can die of starvation. Instead, your food just gives you buffs, and the world is extremely big and impossible to navigate. Honestly, the food system really isn't that much of a problem. Besides marking berries on your map because you can't grow them at your base for some reason, if there's any way we can implement that into the game sometime soon so we can make blueberry patches near our base, that would be fantastic. Thank you! Just about everything can be grown in the black forest or the meadows. Although there are a few items that have to be grown in the plains. Other than that, just about everything you want can be grown at your house and crafted there as well. Unless you want serpent meat, which you have to go into the ocean biome and kind of sail around and hope for the best. Or, if you're in a rush and you really have to be somewhere, say you died in the middle of nowhere and you have to race back to get your stuff, that's normally when they spawn in the middle of the ocean when you're on a raft, hoping for the best. You'll normally get like one, you'll kill it, and then another one will spawn and destroy your raft and you're stuck in the middle of the ocean until you're stamina bar lowers and you die. Valheim very often feels incredibly unforgiving. As someone who's been playing Dark Souls 3 for the last couple of days, I can honestly say that unforgiving games are not as much fun as people chalk them up to be. This time! This time! Come at me! I'm done with your sh I'm done with it! Come at me! God! God! I'm sick of your shit! My black ass is getting tired of this Man, I'm getting tired of this. Shit. Why can't I get more flasks? How do I get more flasks? Is there a way I can get more flasks? No, I'm not getting sloppy. I'm not getting sloppy. It's because it's hot in here. It's because it's hot in here. Give me a minute. I'm gonna go grab my fan. Well, honestly, that depends on if you're expecting an unforgiving experience or if you're looking for an unforgiving experience. When I first ever played Valheim, I was not looking for an unforgiving experience. A Souls-like, if you will. Valheim has this amazing talent to strip you of all your happiness and joy within seconds. Unless you alter the game, which they do give you the settings to do that, the game honestly feels like a Sisyphean task. Like you're pushing up a rock and you're never gonna make it, and every time you get close, something kills you and you lose all your stuff. Some things in the game just seem like they're catered to make sure you lose. Like for instance, every time it like at night, your stamina regens much slower, and it goes even slower when it's wet. Basically to a crawl, you can count how fast it's going with one hand. On its own, it's really not that bad. When you're in the meadow, you can pretty much kill just about anything fairly easily. In the black forest, well, things change a little bit. There are a few different things that can kill you a little easier, like trolls and shamans. Trolls being the most absurdly powerful thing in this game, other than abominations. Trolls are so broken, they literally have them set as a raid. And whenever they show up, it's like drawing 
drop everything and deal with it because they will like that i don't even we have to get to the part where i'm talking about enemies i can't talk about them now but i'm, I'm gonna have a bit to say about trolls but that feature really isn't all that annoying because normally the rain stops after a while and you have time to dry off and you can regain stamina back to normal go back to being the apex predator you were meant to be up until you get to the swamps the swamps are by far one of the worst parts of this whole game bar none hands down the swamp sucks so much ass. Because like I said, normally it stops raining and you can dry off and go back to getting your normal stamina regen. Even if it's night, you can still have enough stamina regen to get away from whatever's attacking you. Most enemies just don't seem to de-aggro, which is another big problem, but that's for when I talk about the enemies. Um, but there's an easy way around it. I, I, we'll talk about it later. But for right now, all you need to know is that stamina problem really isn't that bad until you get to the swamps. Within Valheim, you basically want to stay the away from water if you're running away from enemies or you're trying to escape enemies not only can just about everything swim and the things that can't swim seem completely unaffected by water being able to walk underneath it and shoot arrows from beneath the water which is by far the strangest and most irritating thing when you're trying to get away from a fight of all time the swamp is completely filled with water giant pockets of water little pockets of water not only that it is always raining every second of the day it never stops so your stamina is is always at a constant crawl but this is a portion of the game where they introduce poison poison will 100 percent kill you just about every single time if you're not prepared for it it lasts somewhere between 17 seconds maybe 18 seconds i don't know because normally by the time i get to the swamps i've already mass produced so much poison resistance it's kind of crazy because if you're caught unawares even for a second without poison resistance you will be killed by a leech they'll just hop up out of the water and bite you these things can even go on land i've seen them go over tree stumps it literally happens the swamps are by far one of the most unforgiving places in the entire game i don't want to talk about the plains because i'm just gonna get angry but i'm gonna have to eventually say what you will about the black forest and this is when i'm finally going to get to talk about the trolls the trolls can be killed fairly easily yes they are very strong and they end up being very strong for the entirety of the game being able to mess up your buildings and raids in fact they could even be a threat to you in late game if you're not ready for them sometimes you could be chilling in your house waiting for your stuff to grow and then a troll comes crumbling through your wall and you end up dying because you didn't have any food in your body and you were immediately killed trolls are more annoying because they come to you the swamps are annoying because you have to go to it and it is filled with some of the most enemies of all time blobs that'll poison you leeches that'll poison you droggards which honestly are not that bad once you know how to deal with them you can pretty much fight them like you can fight players if you ever end up playing this game with some of your friends they can be stunned fairly easily if you're prepared for them most of the time you're not because you never have any stamina because you spend so much time running away from abominations and blobs you really don't have time to prepare to be fighting every single drogger that sees you from a mile away oh yeah and speaking of abominations literally f these things abominations sole reason of existing is to fuck up your entire run and make you lose all your iron so you can't sail it back to your house and then guard your stuff until you're able to kill it trolls normally stand out in the open it's very hard to miss them you can see them and it's very easy to sneak around them sneak is the key word because you literally can see them they are gigantic blue monsters you know exactly where they are but they don't always know where you are so it's very easy to hide from them abominations are the complete different they hide under the ground you have no idea where they are until they're already attacking you or you see them coming up from under the ground most of the time you're coming out of a crypt or going to a crypt so you've already used a bunch of your stamina and fighting them is very very hard mostly because of the stamina regen whenever you are in the swamps your goal is to get into the swamps and out of the swamps as soon as possible you want to get your iron that you can't teleport which okay let's stop right there and talk about the not being able to teleport thing you can't teleport ores unless they are already made into a weapon which means if you had to sail half across the map to get to a black forest to get copper you have to sail all the way back with your stuff unless of course you alter the game which you wouldn't do because you're a good gamer like me and you play it just the way it was meant to be played even though you hate it there is no alternative so unless you have a portal down to get back your stuff so you can sail back if something kills you your stuff is there until you build another boat collect all the resources 
again, sail out there with no armor, and pray to God that you're able to get it before whatever killed you, because it is probably still by your stuff, and you have no chance of killing it without any of your weapons, and you probably don't have a chance of killing it with your weapons. Your only course of action is to grab your sh** and run to the hills, and hope that whatever is chasing you is slower and that corpse run does its job. Until you get better gear, or a professional who plays this game for fun and does speed runs where they don't ever get armor or anything like that because they've been playing the game so long that they just know everything about it, unless you're that, you are pretty much at the mercy of whatever biome you're in. No matter how much armor you have, no matter how powerful you have become, never let your guard down in any biome past Black Forest. There will always be something that will kill you. And when you die, as I may or may not have said before, I'm not gonna turn the page so I can keep reading through my script. I know that if I keep flip-flopping back through my book, I'm gonna start getting bored and watch Twitch and whatever. My brain is like a hyperactive volcano. I have to stay focused on what I'm doing. <laughs> Bad analogy, but that's not the point. If you die, you have to go back and get all your stuff. Every single little thing. But unless you're like me and have an autistic need to collect extra of everything, the suit of armor that you are wearing is your only suit of armor. Either you get that back or you're completely up a creek and you no longer can play the game until you get it back from that impossibly hard biome where you keep getting poisoned. I'm not going to talk about the, uh, the planes in this video because in my playthrough that I'm playing currently, I have not gotten there, although I will make references to it. And that's not even accounting for the stuff that you can't even teleport. If you build a portal, grab all your stuff, and then try to go through with 30 iron ore, you literally cannot teleport and whatever killed you will kill you again because you did not know that you could not teleport that stuff. And eventually, when you kill whatever was chasing you, you still have to sail it all the way back, which is honestly one of the best parts of the whole game in my opinion. A lot of my friends that also play on the server with me hate sailing. They all hate it. Every single time they go sailing, they always complain about it, like it's the worst part of the game. In my eyes, sailing from point A to point B is one of the most relaxing things, especially during the day. In real life, I absolutely love water. I love going to the park and staring into the man-made pond, trying to see whatever fish I could find, and honestly just having a good time. Water fascinates me, whether it's in a video game or it's in real life. I also really like feeling like I've accomplished something, so normally whenever I play Valheim, I get a crap ton of resources because I love to sail around, and also I don't like feeling like I haven't achieved anything. So that's normally why I have so many resources. I just, I just go to different biomes and basically scrub them clean so I can keep sailing there and sailing back. It's, it's a problem. It, it, it's a problem. <laughs> it's a problem, I know. One of the biggest problems I hear that a lot of people have, and sometimes it does frustrate me despite how much I love sailing, is the fact that the wind always seems to be against you, which I think is intentional, so that you'll have to beat Motor, which is the drag boss because she can control the wind so I think that pretty much the wind does that completely on purpose to get you to beat motor and progress in the game and also that the map is just too big and it takes too long to get everywhere on the boat which I will admit the map is pretty big and sometimes it does really seem like it's designed that way to pad out the game time or to purposely frustrate you with how far you have to go when you die but to be completely honest I really don't mind I love sailing so much it barely bothers me at all <coughs> it barely bothers me at all my god <laughs> Honestly, I feel like they just like to complain about stuff. I don't feel like the sailing is really that bad once you get the hang of it. If you have on a good podcast while you're uh, sailing, it's not terrible. A lot of the times, I'll just watch a YouTube video or a Twitch stream. I'll catch up on stuff while I'm waiting to get to wherever I need to be. It's not bad. I just think they like to complain, honestly. <laughs> I don't believe for a second that the sailing was made this way so it could pad out the game time so that you would be forced to play it past the refund date, which is something one of my friends said, and I just don't agree with it whatsoever. I believe that the game is meant to feel as much like an adventure as possible. Like the world is so big and there's so much happening that you can't see it all in one place. Like you have to actually travel to go places and take part in events, such as beating the boss or getting back to your base for a raid. The game is really meant to feel like a world, not just a tiny map. But for people with not a lot of attention span, yes, traveling on the boat I can imagine does feel like a long and tedious job, but I honestly feel like it's one of the best parts of the game. And as frustrating 
frustrating as running into a sea serpent can be, it honestly drops some of the best food in the game. And you can kill them if you're prepared for them. You can honestly just murder them in the middle of the ocean. They don't really drop anything useful other than the meat. If you really want to build the sea serpent shield, go ahead, but you'll probably only use it like three times in the entire playthrough. It's very heavy and very slow and very hard to upgrade. I, I don't even recommend you even try to get the shield. Just kill the sea serpent and get the meat. Most, if not all of the foods are very easy to get, except for the sea serpent and maybe lox meat. Although I did say I wasn't going to talk about biomes that I haven't made it yet to in this playthrough, but uh, just about everything else is very easy to get. And you can have a pretty good diet and stamina and health just on what you have in the beginning. Once you have a good farm going in a cauldron, it really depends on your build, what you decide to do for offense and defense, because your build really determines how you do in other biomes and what you decide to go for. Some weapons are very viable up until the swamps, other ones aren't. Some armor is heavier than other armor. It really depends on how you want to play because a lot of the armors that are not the armors that are on the normal progression path have different abilities. Like if you kill enough abominations, you can get the armor that increases your bow skill, but it's not super defensive. So you're kind of trading out one thing for another. I'm going to try to go for that in my run. I did get iron armor, but I'm going to go for the abomination skin just so I can have it just in case if I do ever want to go full bow. Since I absolutely love to grind, that's definitely something I'm going to do. And speaking of loving to grind, if you love games where you have to spend hours and hours collecting stuff and you enjoy slowly seeing the little number on the side of your inventory go up as you collect things you don't really need but you might need later, this game is definitely for you. I have a little motto for this game. Pick it up because you're gonna need it later. And that cannot be more true. One really big thing that you do in this game is pick up berries, the raspberries. At the beginning of the game, they're very inconsequential. They give you a little bit of stamina, but nothing to like write home about. You pick them up and you don't really think much else of it. You eat them and then you keep running on your way. But then you get later on in the game and you find out that they are actually needed to craft a bunch of stuff. So now you have to go back out and try to find more of them. You need like 14 berries to craft what you want to craft or enough of what you need to be able to survive in whatever biome you're trying to go into. And you don't have any and you can't grow them. So you have to mark them on your map. That's one thing about this game is that you always need whatever you have. So never throw it away and just build tons of chests so you can keep it all. And always collect more than you think you're gonna need. One thing I always do is I go to multiple biomes and I scrape them out like the orcs in Fangong Forest for Saruman. I strip the biome dry of everything in it and then I take it all to my base because you never know how much you're gonna need. Honestly, when you find out how much copper and how many blueberries and everything you'll need, even after you pass that part of the progression in the game, it is truly staggering. I'm unemployed, so I pretty much have all day to collect stuff, which I'm not sure if I should be happy about, but I try not to think about it that often, to be honest with you. But for people who absolutely love to grind and spend hours collecting things, hours growing things, sometimes even IRL days, this game is literally for you because brewing stuff takes literal IRL hours. No lie, once you start brewing stuff, you better have something else to do or you better have like, enough time to go like read a book or something it genuinely takes a very long time which as i said earlier really isn't that big deal for me because normally i'm watching a podcast or a twitch stream or watching a youtube video so waiting for stuff to happen really isn't that big of a deal i actually mildly enjoy waiting for stuff to happen it, it it's fun so for some people that may be a you know a downside of the game but for me it's actually one of the highlights and it's honestly worth collecting a lot of stuff because you die a lot in this game and one big problem with dying a lot is that you drop all your stuff so it's always better to have stuff at your base to replace the stuff that you dropped until you can get your stuff back and as i said earlier you will definitely die a lot this game has no idea what a fair fight is you will be swarmed by a hundred different enemies and you can't kill all of them at the same time and then a troll or an abomination will show up while you're fighting the boss like honestly this game can feel unfair like i said earlier swarming is very uncomfortable it makes you very angry but if you know what you're doing it's really not all that bad i don't want to harp too much on the combat because I don't really feel like that's a massive part of the game for me. And this is just me talking about what I enjoy. Most of the time I'm just sneaking past most enemies. Unless I'm in the swamps and they can just see me from a mile away. Most of the time I'm just sneaking past them. Because as I said, I just want to talk about the biomes that I've played within my playthrough and I'm only up to the swamps. If we're talking about the mistlands or if we're talking about the mountains or if we're talking about the...
planes, that is an entirely different story when it comes to sneaking around. But I'll make a different video on that when I finally get there. Honestly, it's worth collecting a lot of stuff because most of everything you collect can be used to build. The building in this game is often a horrible experience that doesn't work and doesn't make any sense like 60% of the time but the other 40% of the time building is like by far one of the best things to do in the game right after sailing building gets better the more you do it so that's why for me personally I try to build as many houses on as many continents as I can just so I can enjoy it and never get tired of building and also so no matter where I am I can always get rested bonus just build a lot like if you really want to have the best experience with this game just take time to build stuff take your time what this game is really about is it's just about having fun a lot of the people i play with like to speed run games they want to get to the next boss as soon as possible and they never want to slow down and just have a good time yes you will get angry yes you would get super frustrated but it'll only get worse if you're trying to get through the game as quickly as possible if you beat one boss and then the moment it's over you're immediately like okay so now we got to kill the next boss right the game is of course going to not be fun take your time and enjoy Enjoy it. I recommend this game to anyone. Anybody who has the means to play it, I recommend this to you. Up until the swamps, that is. I plan to make another video once I get to the Ashlands, and then I'll talk about the other biomes, and then I'll make a video all about the Ashlands all on its own. But up until the swamps, I totally recommend this game. But don't play it with people that are trying to speed run it and they're not willing to let you have your fun. I believe that this game was meant to be played with multiple people. There is no way that a map this huge was meant to be played with just one person and i'm just gonna let out some of my own personal anger and hatred right now so uh this is not meant for anybody watching this video unless uh the person who i'm talking to is watching this video which he probably won't be um just like just ignore this part you don't have to control everything the point of a game is to literally have fun you don't have to make sure that everyone's moving at a certain pace so they can beat the game at a certain time the whole point is to have fun and enjoy it in any way you see fit there is no law that says that you have to wait for the whole party to be there to go get iron. There is no law that says we all have to base together, and there is no law that says that we have to wait to cook food. The point of Valheim is to have fun in a gigantic open world and do stuff together, but also have time to do stuff on your own. I recommend this game to anyone. I think this game is perfect for anybody who wants to have the kind of experience that you will never forget and is always going to be fun in your mind. But just make sure you choose the right people to play with because one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to pick a bunch of people who want to control the whole game and tell you what you should be doing to make it fun and what you shouldn't be doing to make it fun telling you what armor you have to make and all that nonsense but i do recommend this game i think it's absolutely fantastic and if you have good friends to play it with play with them but that's really all the notes i have for this video my next video on this is going to be on the mistlands plains and mountains biomes and then i'm going to do one all for its own for the uh, ashlands i'm very excited to actually continue this game all of the footage used was from my own playthrough that i've been playing for the last couple of months and yeah i definitely hope that you try this out and hey don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button on your way out if you want to watch more videos of me talking about video games that i really enjoy sometimes even movies or going fishing because that's something i really want to start doing on this channel because i love to fish i totally recommend that you subscribe so you never miss a video subscribing and liking will definitely help me out as well whenever i upload another one of these messes <laughs> so yeah don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you in the next one